there is no cotton roll isolation mm. in endodontics or restorative but honestly i am just doing a 10% of, of what my potential has still i am learning if you want to be a good practitioner you should think about learning first rather than earning on because you. you are one of the few people who took something that is unconventional like a micro endodontics follow your passion and i am the currently the youngest international trainer for microscopic teaching and microscopic like courses and all the cds so hello everyone i am dr vishal gandhi i am not an endodontist i am a bds with pure dedication and love towards endo and right now towards micro endo people always always think rohan can do this or vishal can do this so we will blindly follow him but that is not the story first make sure our dentistry is actually very easy if you want to learn in a proper way it's very easy but we always try to get the shortcut unfortunately i have to say this it's not about your skill each and every time many times it's about your way of doing that thing first make sure have you done any upper seven root canal have you know the orientation of the canal do you know how you will insert the file into the canal do you know how you can pre count because as you said that the tooth is the second most complex thing in our body so there are chances miss your buckle two canal mb2 canal is missed canal or something can you give a little bit more light to it if you ask me vishal what is the most important step in root canal whole therapy or root canal treatment my answer is always always and always there is no infected dentist there is no affected dentist for endodontic so you will just make sure your dentin has to be healthy yellow i was about to ask that what are the outdated or what are the old thoughts and concepts that now first first if- welcome to unidenture dental podcast season 2 where we learn about dentistry what new things are coming some tips and tricks and how to improve your clinical skills so that you can be a more successful clinician and we can uplift our dentistry as a whole This episode is going to be jam packed with knowledge about the bread and butter of our dentistry which is root canal treatment. What are the old concepts? How to improve your success ratio of root canal treatments? What is the pre endo build up, rubber dam application, irrigation protocols and lot more. With the youngest international speaker for the micro endodontics in India who is also famous for root canal retreatments and file retrievals, Dr. Vishal Gandhi. So let's dive into the world of root canal treatments. Good evening Vishal sir. Welcome to Unidenture Dental Podcast and it is my honor to have you on our show as a Pleasure. guest speaker because you are one of the few people who like follow your passion took something that is unconventional like a micro endodontics go through it and now you have become an international speaker so it's really inspirational and really when I've seen you working I feel like if i want to learn about rc then i need to take your mentorship so it's really a good thing that i will be learning so much and our viewers also will be learning so much of the things so in today's episode we will be covering about a little bit of your journey what are the concepts of root canal treatment mm-hmm. what is rubber dam application yeah. why people are u- not using it and using it what are the importance what is the importance of magnification in the dentistry and uh why what are the reasons that file breakage happen and what is the retrieval system okay. so let's start with your journey so how is your journey in the dentistry so hello everyone i'm dr vishal gandhi i'm not an endodontist i'm a bds with pure dedication and love towards endo and right now towards micro endodontics so in 2014 till now the one thing is always with me is endodontics and endodontics i was very passionate from the like beginning only hmm. so when i started my dental journey i wanted to do something different when i'm saying different different doesn't mean that like just go out of the track and do something unusual do the usual thing but with the perfection with the correction right so i started microscopic journey from the next year like in 2014 I started my clinic in 2013 and then 14 15 onwards I started my microscopic journey. I was the youngest at time to start microscope in the India and even in the world. And I am the currently the youngest international trainer for microscopic teaching and microscopic like courses and all the CDs. If you actually want to learn dentistry be passionate. Do something which make you very 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 calm at your work. at the same time you should enjoy your work 
for an example if you are just doing a class 1 cavity enjoy it if you are doing a class 2 cavity just enjoy it if you are actually extracting the root enjoy it if you are not enjoying your work it will become actually a hard work like a labor work for you and eventually you will get fed up my journey is all about magnification and all about like doing most easiest work in a perfect way so when i started in 2014 i was the same like all like what we start in a, like in a simple way box dentistry mm. so people just are doing like what we have seen these people are doing like they will just be prepare a box for everything they will not do class 2 they will not do endo correct way in a correct way they will just put a crown because they want to earn money but i believe money is a byproduct if you do a proper dentistry money will actually come on mm. so you do not need to find your patient later on at one stage of time you do not need to think about how actually you are earning because that will become a routine for you so i was in internship at that time i i'm not remembering exactly but i have seen a video or maybe a photo in some of the brochure a practitioner was working with the microscope and at that time i decided that i wanted to do this this and this this dentistry because i am not going to do the all routine dentistry because for dentistry i understood in 2013 in my internship i was a very average student but i understood at that time you need a great vision you need perfection because this is a microstructure your tooth has like width around two centimeter mm. so when you are working in a centimeter area then your eye though you are a great clinician you have a great knowledge but your eye has limitation so you have to understand that that your eye is not capable to differentiate the minor structure so for that i decided in internship only that i will like work with the microscope only eventually i took one year time to get my first microscope right now i'm having three microscope a very good microscopic practice and people are saying that i'm doing a good work but honestly i'm just doing a 10 percent of, of what my potential has still i'm learning and if you want to be a good practitioner you should think about learning first rather than earning only because right now what trained i am seeing on like social media let's say on instagram facebook people are just after like promotion for their clinics or maybe for their name but when time has come like time is to perform in live patient maybe they are lacking in somewhere mm. and that's why maybe their patient is like becoming like patients for another clinic or maybe they are not retentive uh, for that practice so my aim is always to do a perfect job and i believe we believe in our clinic we believe to do a slow dentistry rather than doing a 50 patients in a day just do a 10 patient in a day or maybe a single patient in a day but with a pure perfection when you actually rely on other things rather uh, then like your handwork mm. things will always always will be difficult mm. so in my journey till now this is my 10th year of practice so, so till now what i have like gone through the phases initially i learned a lot then i actually practiced then i tried in patients i'm using this word try because i'm accepting this thing today i have no mentor till now so whatever I have learned, I have learned by my own only, mm -hmm. by seeing YouTube videos, by reading many a days, like I have read Cohen in three, like three nights continuously. I have read Ingle in single night, whole night. I kept, I keep on reading and at this moment also, I keep on reading every day, at least for 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So in my journey, first I was learning, then I started doing practice on like extra teeth on patients. And at one moment when I understood, it becomes a routine practice of your life. Like you do not need to think about if there is a case for file retrieval. Okay, it's okay. This is my job. If there is a case of perforation, this is my job. And this is a strong point I want to raise. If you are a, want to become a specialist for one thing, you have to leave another thing or maybe the rest things. What people are doing 
like in current scenario what i have seen they want to become like they want to excel every field of dentistry you know i am doing endodontics only since last eight and a half years around nine years i must say i am saying like this very firmly i am i have done only 13 or maybe 30 40 percent of endodontics only till now so there is, there is a big scope for me even mm -hmm. i'm doing every day the most like difficult things but still i believe there are so many other things to explore also so you, you should not think that if you are a bds or if you are a mds in another branch or if you are like your degree is this or that you should not limit yourself to this point if you want to become a specialist or if you want to excel in some field of dentistry go ahead go ahead there is no actually sky is the limit actually in this world sky is also not the limit and there is so many possibilities that you can go ahead ahead and ahead so just believe yourself because i have i have like taught so many endodontists also i am interacting every day with the international speakers with the like international endodontists and what i have learned from them like you have to be a student first mm -hmm. until your last day of practice you have to be a student rather than a excellent mentor excellent speaker first if you ask me who i am i am dr vishal gandhi and i am a student mm -hmm. for lifetime right right Definitely, sir. I totally agree with you because uh, if I say about me, like in my third year in undergraduation, my hands were shaking whenever I was doing patient. And if I look at now, after like four or five years, uh, th there is a sudden change. Like there is so much confidence because I know the things that I know the diagnosis, what I need to do. If this happens, then I need to do this. All of this I learned. Then actually I can apply it learning is most important for anyone exactly exactly you know we always like try to blame our colleges mm -hmm. that in our college they have not taught this or they are not teaching like people like dentists or maybe the fellow like juniors mm -hmm. this 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 private practice is totally different what you are learning let me be very honest you are actually most of the time just learning to get the marks right. just so, so that you can pass or maybe uh, like to get the passing numbers. But the thing is when you work in your private practice, the things are totally different. Mm -hmm. And for that, your eyes or maybe your hands, it should not be the, like the underconfident way. You should be very confident. Now confidence come, mm -hmm. comes with only and only first knowledge and then practice. Because right now what people think, Vishal Gandhi is working with the microscope. Because I have heard this. Vishal Gandhi is working with microscope. Vishal Gandhi has everything. If he can do, then we also can do. I always push them. You can do, but just spend the same time as I spent in my earlier career of like my stage, early stage of my career. So you have to do, you have to practice each and every day. You have to practice more and more because our dentistry is very evolving like branch. It's not about your skill each and every time. Many times it's about your way of doing that thing. Or maybe for an example, if you are doing a class two composite, mm -hmm. rubber dam is the most essential thing. So rubber dam, same way. Like if I ask you, Rohan, are you doing composite without bonding agent? What mm -hmm. will be your answer? I will. It is the most essential step exactly. for me. Now, because... yes, most essential step huh. according to is bonding agent. If you think about bonding agent, mm. I, if you want to make like, if you want to extract ideal property from the bonding agent, mm. you have to put rubber dam. Right. Because... So rubber dam is the most basic thing. Now people are investing heavily mm. in like a good bonding agent system but they are not investing or they are not actually bother about the most basic thing in endodontics, especially in restorative yeah. and endodontics. How about that? Isolation. Isolation. Now, when when we call isolation, isolation it is equal to rubber dam isolation. There is no cotton roll isolation mm. in endodontics or restorative. So the people always like jump from not zero to one, always like zero to hundred. Mm. 
so they always try to skip the in between process and they always try to reach the mount everest mm. but you have to like climb on ladder by like step on step like on ladder you have to you cannot go from like 1 to 5 mm. directly people you can go but the thing is if you are going from 1 to 2 2 to 3 there is always a proper learning curve so i always say this don't forget the most basic thing and i i say this in my lectures you know people call me or maybe student ask me sir i learn to i want to learn advanced endodontics mm -hmm. or maybe i want to learn advanced rubber dam now i always ask like rather than giving an answer i always ask in return like my question would be what is advanced for you yeah. if you are doing rubber. if you are doing a basic thing in a proper way there is mm -hmm. nothing called advanced in our dentistry because if you are not making a ledge, then you do, you do not need to think about how you will bypass ledge. Mm. Ha, if there is a case from another dentist, then there is a different story. But you are not making a proper glide path. And now you are your every other case has some or other iatrogenic errors like ledge or maybe the instrument. Then there is, there is some issues in your technique or maybe you have not learned in proper way. Mm. So you should think in that way while you do your dentistry. People always, always think Rohan can do this or Vishal can do this. So we will blindly follow him. Mm. But that is not the story. First, make sure. Have you done any upper seven root canal? Mm. Have you know the orientation of the canal? Do you know how you will insert the file into the canal? Do you know how you can pre cow then think about the curvature cases this is very simple but people want to learn directly lower seven s shape case or maybe upper mesiobuccal root and the c shape banana curve or lower six banana curve or maybe the reverse curve bionet curve elbow curve but first learn the protocol mm. so in my dentistry i'm always always and always after first if I'm learning anything, a new thing, so first I will make sure what is the ideal protocol. What is the machines or maybe materials I will require. Materials, when I say materials, you have to think about materials property in dentistry. Because many a times, if I ask you, Rohan, what is the difference between these two bonding agents? In terms of etching, in terms of how many seconds you will scrub bonding agent if primer is required or not or maybe how you apply your composite things are totally different between a and the b mm. bonding agent so you know we are always behind someone like vishal gandhi can do i will also do but if i am using a x composite or y composite my like philosophy is i will go through a to z for that product like in and out i will know everything then i will start using so when you are you want to use or why you want to start something you should understand what is the material property and how you can achieve maximum mm. with the rubber dam the most basic thing with what other things you will require right mm. and that is how you can progress in your like dentistry our dentistry is actually very easy if you if you if you want to learn in a proper way it's very easy but we always try to get the shortcut. Unfortunately, I have to say this. And 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 like many times we skip these steps and we always reach to the, this point. Now, you cannot go back from there. You cannot come back. In fact, you cannot come back from Mount Everest without like, so you will fall. Mm. Now, well, what is falling in your dentist, your private dentist, your patient will come back. Mm. After like you have done in last six months, you have done a, 20 30 composites mm. without isolation or without understanding of the materials material property in fact your patient will keep on coming back now this is the falling stage of mm. your dentist and now what you will do you will call some other consultant mm. or maybe you will ask to some other person now he or she has another other philosophy right. now you are you your mindset has changed to vishal's philosophy to some other philosophy mm. you are getting me and that is not the right way it's always you when you are doing if i am extracting if i am like removing a broken file mm. then it should be my protocol i should follow 
what instruments I am using according to that I should make a single protocol of mine that should I that that I will follow like for most of the cases but that has to be mine rather than thinking about some others I will inspire or maybe I will learn from him but when in my practice scenario will be like total dependent on me yeah. so you should think about that do not copy any other, like other fellow or maybe any other guy yeah. you should learn from him or her but eventually when you are the boss in your private practice don't go go, go to the mount everest straight away mm. otherwise when you will fall like maybe your a good prestige or maybe good name will like spoil in within like few years and that is the story for many because many dentists will tell you there is nothing in dentistry uh, i'm like i'm in dentistry since 2015 16 like like five ten years and because you will not see a growth in your practice so if you want to see a growth you have to like upgrade mm. you have to learn and another the same thing you have to be a student forever because mm. Even in like at 10 years of my practice, I am I'm, I'm always open to learn new things because I always say this, I only know endo. Mm. So I want to learn other things also that can make my endo more successful, mm. that can make me good as like make, make me as a good clinician, right? So you should think in that way rather than only following blindly to someone mm. or maybe just making a statement like, if he can do it, I, I will also do it. Because I, I say this many times. People come to me or people people send me cases for instrument retrieval. I don't do anything. I neither retrieve nor bypass. Now he or she will ask me, Vishal, I have sent you this patient for this purpose and you are not doing anything. Why you are like uh, choosing this way? Mm. I always say this when you are actually managing the instrument or maybe actually removing the instrument you are not removing the instrument you are actually saving the tooth mm -hmm. now just think on this for just five seconds then you will understand what is actually what it has to be like actually at the center mm -hmm. i always say this if your composite getting failed it's okay try to learn rather than putting crown mm -hmm. destroy the tooth and there is no go back scenario. So if your treatment is getting failed, at some point of time, it's okay. But your tooth, your patient's tooth has mm -hmm. to be there. Same way if you are removing an instrument, actually you are not removing an instrument. You are actually saving the tooth. Mm -hmm. And that has to be in your mind from the first second to the last second. Because ultrasonic when you are working under microscope okay that can be conservative but without microscope i have seen people removing instruments or maybe correcting ledge or maybe any any of the endodontic work without microscope or magnification they are working with the ultrasonic mm -hmm. eventually you are somewhere or somewhat doing your job mm -hmm. like once out of hundred two or maybe out of hundred five out of hundred times you will able to do like your job successfully but what about the 95 percent of mm. cases cases so magnification the most important thing if you ask me what is the most important thing in like endodontics or maybe dentistry or restorative it's always magnification mm. you know people think I will start, I will uh, buy microscope at the like after my 20 years of practice or after my 10 years of practice and I was the fool like at first year of my practice I decided I want to like I wanted to have a microscope and I decided I will go in like future I will do each and every case with the microscope only. Mm -hmm. So, so if we talk about diagnosis a little bit many times cases got referred to me patient is in pain totally like idiopathic kind of scenario now patient even dentist both are not knowing which tooth or where from where the pain is coming like microscope many times there is a crack microscope within a few seconds microscope will tell me this tooth is a crack 
we should go for the further endodontic treatment or maybe the surgical extraction treatment it's very easy when you work with this when you work with the microscope it's actually very easy because it's not a like high fi dentistry if you ask me what is the most amazing thing microscope now microscope comes with like from 2 lakhs to 20 lakhs like in this category according to your budget you should invest in that i'm not saying that you should buy this x brand or maybe the y brand but start with the microscope as soon as you can in your private practice mm. second most important thing i want to tell to like all the listeners if you are an oral pathologist or if you are a periodontist or if you are a prosthodontist if you are touching a tooth for endodontic purpose think you are the best endodontist in the world mm. your patient has put trust on you and he or she is allowing to touch her or his tooth to you right now the thing is if you are thinking that i am i am an oral pathologist or maybe i am the very beginner person or maybe i have so many opds or maybe i am not from this branch and you are missing mb2 mm. or you are like making a ledge and you are just putting a con up to that up to that level the tooth canal is not cleaned canal is canal is not shaped canal is not filled properly and now you are just making an excuse that i am not the endodontist then why you have touched the tooth mm. why you have touched the tooth my all my question is always this not because i am an endo specialist i believe i can do only endo so i am not touching anything else that is my priority for my patients mm. so ultimately the thing is many times case cases got referred sir i am a prosthodontist i have started this case I, I, I was doing re-root canal and now this this error has happened. Mm. So sometimes I ask them that why you have touched, why not to send me at the first place? So you will save your time, you will like save your patient's time, and eventually your that tooth will stay a longer time. So my suggestion or my advice would be you will not think in in that way that I am this person or I am the second year pg student or maybe i am from like i am uh, an oral surgeon mm-hmm. if you want to do root canal or maybe if you want to do composites or maybe if you would want to do if you want to make a denture first learn if you are not knowing don't experiment on patients mm-hmm. and then start in your like practice keep some person keep the right person with you if if you feel but do properly and at at one point of time if you feel this is not like in my control now this is the best time you should refer or maybe you should manage the case very calmly and very peacefully because mm-hmm. many times cases got referred to me no coronal structure left or maybe no like uh, there is no structure there is no dentin in coronal third people have used uh, ultrasonic very aggressively now they are referring case to me and now they are thinking if vishal is taking the case he will do some magic and patient's tooth will survive for a longer time actually dear that is not my fault i can just repair the things i cannot regenerate right mm-hmm. so that one has to understand that you should you should refer or maybe you should understand the case complexity and accordingly take the case i always say this uh, this is my very like famous sentence if many many of many of people have heard this just touch the case if you are able to complete it or if you are going to do something better than the previous one otherwise don't 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 touch this because ultimately you are end up with nothing your patient is like almost from the like what what you have started uh, or maybe your someone your uh, post op will become someone as pre op mm. so that is not the criteria in like endo specially because many times what people do they will just start blindly without seeing iopr i have seen people doing root canals without iopr without iopr so i am not kahan se aate hai log i am not i am not knowing how can they start cause of cause you have to understand you are doing a root root canal treatment now tell me can you see the root 
in your patient's mouth it is okay embedded in, embedded in bone exactly so it is in bone now when you have not any idea about root anatomy mm. how you can do any work in that anatomical space which is rank number 2 in human body after brain anatomy mm. so root canal anatomy system or space is rank number 2 in complexity after the brain anatomy so you can think about what complex spaces we have while we are doing a root canal treatment mm. so this is the thing that even even same with the diagnosis unfortunately people are not behind diagnosis in endo cause a patient will come to you sir i am having a food lodgement between like two molars first and the second molars now you will see the case you will see in patient's mouth you will see there is a decay okay and you will expose the like you will uh, take the rvg and you will see caries is close or caries or decay is close to the pulp for a safer side we'll go for the rct mm -hmm. and in that rct after second sitting or maybe after first sitting case will refer to me with the instrument separation can you imagine the scenario now the same case you can manage with a proper diagnosis just do the vitality test mm -hmm. you have to understand patient has pain because of food lodgement and inflamed gingiva between the two tooth but you are after endo blindly after endo and now you have made a made an error a big error now you are referring the case or maybe you are just putting the case as it is and you are putting a crown mm. so eventually after 2 years 3 years patient will come up with a lesion and now what you what you going to do the thing is you should understand if there is a, an irre irreversible pulpitis there is a reversible pulpitis vitality test the most easiest most cheapest thing that endo ice bottle just mm -hmm. 900 or maybe 1000 bucks bottle you have to have in your clinic and just make sure if there is a reversible pulpitis and there is some there is a, there is exposure in in the pulp you just need to seal it with the bioceramics under good isolation again when i am saying isolation it has to be rubber dam isolation so why you are going with the root canal you know many times like before 5 years people were sending patients for root canal since last 5 years people are sending cases to me for not doing for not do root canals for vital pulpotomy so i do regularly this vital pulpotomy in all things you need to have a good diagnosis nothing else yes cold taste is very subjective you will have a some learning curve sometimes your patients will not like give you a ideal like a mm. verbal uh, result because this is a verbal result a verbal response mm. so but this is how you can you learn so initially 5 10 case it will take some time but once you get used to once you feel confident that how this works it will be very easy for an example you have seen this cases or everyone have like seen this case uh many times there is a lesion attached to lower like from lateral to lateral mm -hmm. and people are doing blindly root canals in each and every tooth associated with the lesion mm -hmm. there is another big big joke i must say every tooth which has like top positive tenderness or percussion like it has to be go in root canal no dear tenderness of on, on percussion is actually suggest periodontal ligament inflammation now that is actually the root canal is for dead or necrosed pulp in anatomic term but actually many times you are doing a root canal in a vital tooth mm. so you have to learn you have to think about diagnosis now many will think sir how will on money charge the same for single root canal because mm. many times people have given options for the surgical many times people have options people have given options to the patient for four tooth root canal three tooth root canal now according to your diagnosis you are going with only single tooth the difference will come in your follow up so understand follow up is also most 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 important in your dentistry many times what what happens 
you have done a good root canal after few years actually that root canal is failing mm -hmm. so you have to understand if when we are talking about diagnosis we have seen like we have talked about reversible irreversible necrospur the most 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 like used word in endodontics abscess 99% of cases there is no abscess because when I'm saying abscess it has to be pus mm. there is a periapical lesion and people call it sir there is a huge abscess dear when you are shaping the canals when you are you are getting the patency when there is no swelling in patients like uh, mouth or maybe around the tooth mm. it is just called as periapical radiolucency mm. or periapical inflammation I will, I will come on that uh, topic also. You know, we used to say periapical infection mm -hmm. and periapical inflammation. Periapical inf in in infection, the most wrong word in our dentistry. Mm -hmm. It has to be periapical inflammation. So, periapical abscess, periapical cyst, you only will tell me because you are an oral patho guy, right? So, you will only tell me that it has to be a histological data, histological report when you are saying a cyst and abscess. And people, this case is periapical abscess, this case is periapical cyst. It, it is not like that, it's just a periapical inflammation. Hmm. Now, when there is an inflammation, just read the source of the inflammation hmm. or maybe bacteria. Okay, bacteria leaves on like pulp. Hmm. So, you are just removing the pulp. You are actually cleaning it. You are disinfecting it with sodium hypochlorite. So, I ask, like, I get these questions many times. Sir, can we finish the uh, case in a single visit when there is a periapical infection? Oh dear, you can. If you get a dry canal, you can, always can. Mm. But for that, your irrigation protocol has to be sound. It's not about just a syringe, a 2 ml syringe of sodium hypochlorite with, like, Un unknowingly secretly dilution with any any of the uh, this thing uh, normal saline and this chlorhexidine it has to be a pure sodium hypochlorite a 5% or maybe a 3% and it has to be a pure with a proper irrigation time with a proper irrigation protocol with a proper activation sodium hypochlorite is just a water without activation mm. and this thing you have to understand in your private practice Many times I I get the case, sir. I have done a proper irrigation. I have done like I have spent three sittings and still patient is having pain. Mm. I just like I plan the patient and I give at least thirty minutes to forty my five minutes of irrigation time with my proper irrigation protocol. And the next or the after two three days patient will call me, sir. I am having like a very good like. Uh, drastically change or maybe good re reduction in pain. So I'm I'm having very less pain now compared to before three four years. Mm. Uh, before three four uh, days, what I'm having the same like it has reduced to a very drastically uh, mm. in a lower amount. So this is how you should understand your protocol because mm. it's always about in private practice. You have to understand patient management is most important yeah. rather than rather than what instruments or what materials you have because hmm. if you are doing a root canal treatment and after one hour patient's pain has not gone then actually you will term you will label it as a not good yeah. clinician i will not use the word bad but you will term as a not good clinician because patient in his or her head will compare to you with some other fellow hmm. right? right so at that time he has like acute apical abscess. Mm. So, just like a soda bottle can theory, he or she has opened the tooth, he has just done the RCU excess cavity preparation mm. and patient pa pain has gone. But now patient is coming with another scenario mm. to you. Another tooth, another scenario. Let's say, let's say symptomatic apical periodontitis. Mm. In that case, there is no pus. So, that soda bottle can theory will not going to help you in this. So, you have to clean canal, you have to shape canal, everything you have to done in, within one hour. Mm. You have to be a real a magician in that one hour. Mm. Otherwise, you will term as not good dentist because he or she will compare because he or she is like totally illiterate in for our field. 
or totally what we can what we call layman so mm-hmm. totally layman for our our endodontics so you have to understand diagnosis first if there is a sinus it is the best case to finish in a single visit irrespective of the lesion size irrespective of the tooth mm-hmm. irrespective of the patient condition cause god has created a her means uh, god has created a natural path to drain out all the infectious or inflammatory inflammatory uh, things mm. to eject out from the body right you understand so this is how it works because many times we call it abscess we call it cyst now you only will tell me how many cases in a like in a lifetime you will see a true cyst rare rare very rare so what you are seeing on two dimensional x ray even in some of the cbcts that is not the true cyst Hmm. Pseudo cyst, or maybe many times even cyst cases, I have treated with the non-surgical way. So that is another protocol. Also, will will come on that. Will 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 come I on that. Also, curious about it. Yes, yes, it will come on that. That cyst also you can treat with the non-surgical way, and there is literature behind that. I am not saying anything in like a like in like just putting anything in air. I am telling you with the. article backup of the study backup right mm. so this is how you can do in endo if there is a lesion in there is a big lesion in lower anterior due to the trauma or upper anterior due to the trauma mm. 99 dentists will go after surgery dear patient will not accept surgery at the first place if just ask your maybe let's say if your sister or brother has the same thing mm. will you go for the surgery or he or she will allow you you know the condition they will like literally literally try to avoid the mm-hmm. thing when you say i have to go with the surgery we have to open your flap we have to do this surgical surgical way so rather than surgical why not non surgical mm-hmm. and let's go in sequence let wait for 6 months 12 months and see the follow up mm-hmm. just do a proper root canal with a proper irrigation and the proper obturation material right or not mm-hmm. this is the way cause many people always like want to have a very easy path to treat the case i always say this because when there is a trauma there is a big lesion a 10 number k file and hypochlorite if you are taking 10k and hypochlorite in your hand you are choosing actually a very long and hard way mm-hmm. and if you are taking a scalpel and a blade if you are like choosing a very easy way mm-hmm. easy way i'm not against any oral surgeon everyone has different different like see everyone will have different i already told yeah different oh. philosophy and different vision to treat a same case right, right? my vision is simple just go with the non surgical mm. i do surgeries also but it's very rare when case has failed for two three times or maybe one more than two times at that time i will think about the surgical mm. so diagnosis is most most important chronic apical abscess acute apical abscess many times i have seen like a patient will come to you with a small kind of swelling or maybe a sw- small swelling or around like gum swelling mm-hmm. like around let's say canine or maybe premolar or molar people will write antibiotics mm-hmm. antibiotic has no role in endodontics bacteria which actually enters your root canal system eat pulp release uh, this uh, toxins mm. and that toxins will go periapical way periapically and now uh, your body immunity will fight against that toxins mm. and that will create a hollow space and that you are seeing in two dimensional x ray or maybe three dimensional x ray mm. and you are calling it periapical lesion mm. or periapical radiolucency now you understand the etiology there is no such thing as like infection is totally inflammation mm. and it's actually a good thing yes i am in in my mind that when i'm saying periapical lesion is a good thing it is actually a good thing why because it tells patient's immunity to you mm. many times if if you must have seen ameloblastoma mm. or maybe you have read about amelo ameloblastoma there is a jo infection right or maybe what you call uh, this jo infection osteomyelitis osteomyelitis perfect so osteomyelitis is a jo infection mm. odontogenic lesion odontogenic origin most of the time mm. so if 
patient has not whole jaw infection, you can bet on your irrigation and your endodontic protocol. Mm. If there is a lesion associated with only single or maybe the two teeth, just imagine it's actually a good thing in this way. You are getting me? So it's actually a good thing. The body is limiting that. Mm -hmm. The body is limiting that lesion. Exactly. The body is limiting that lesion and body is actually asking you to just to intervene. You can, if you can give your 20, 30, 40 percent, mm. body will take the charge ah. from that. And actually, no one can disinfect root canal system 100 percent. Mm. 90 percent, no. 80 percent, no. 60 percent, you can reach to 50, 60 percent. Still, you are getting healing in six months in a big lesion. So, just imagine how body is like what God has created inside. You just need to be a carrier. Just treat the tooth. Don't think about this will heal or not. See in this six months. Hmm. That is the right approach. So, many times when patient comes with a small swelling, you and your antibiotics is actually making that acute apical abscess case to acute spreading apical abscess case. So when you call the patients after a few days or maybe after three, four days, patient is coming back to you, ask him or her mm. that you have malaise in those past three, four days or maybe you have fever. He or she, many patients will tell you, yes, sir, I was not feeling well. So I was literally slept three days and I was not doing anything. I was not in my mood. Mm. I was having malaise, body pain, everything. Why this happens? Because you are actually that making that acute apical abscess case to acute spreading apical abscess case. So antibiotic has actually no role until and unless patient has any systemic history. Okay. So for a good endo, hmm. you have to understand. You will need to learn some basic things about gum management, hmm. some basic things about restoration. Hmm send some basic thing about prostho mm. for your crown margin or even if you are doing a crown by yourself your margin has to be an ideal like preparation has to be an ideal and your margin has to be on like tooth or in some cases on restoration mm. but that has to be very evenly sealed and a proper sealed so endo never get get fail with the apical like end scenario it always get failed with the coronal leakage. Mm. So if you ask me which seal is more important in private practice, in clinical scenario, it always has to be coronal seal. That doesn't mean apical seal is not important. But when you compare this two, mm. apical and coronal, coronal seal has to be a like a watertight seal, mm. a hermetic seal. So many times what people usually do, they will start the root canals, they will straight away dive into the root canals. Mm. They will not bother about what is outside the tooth. 90% of class 2 cases when patients having pain, pain is from inflamed gum. And now you have to understand first, think in that way, you will correct each and everything from top to bottom. Mm. So first make sure your top, top means patient's crown oh. or maybe patient's tooth structure in the mouth has to be correct. So always make sure you do the gingectomy. You will, if needed, you will do the DME, DMA. Now what is DMA and DME? DMA, it means deep margin acquisition that you have do, you will do with the electrocautery, with the laser, with the thermocut, with the, this, uh, your burst. First, make sure you will acquire that deep margin. Because if you are not getting the sound tooth margin, a caries free tooth margin, mm. your tooth will going to fail. Though you have used a proper irrigation protocol, mm. a bioceramic sealer, eventually everything will fail down the line two, three, five years. Mm. So patient ask me in routine, Vishal, how long this tooth will stay? Mm. My answer is always this. Till I am alive. Your tooth is mine. Mm. If I have done a mistake. If, if, if your crown is not okay. It's my responsibility. 
yeah but you have to keep your oral hygiene in a good yeah, yeah maintain on in a good way mm. right and in india every root canal grossly we can say mm. it's a class 2 root canal mm. okay. when i'm saying class 2 root canal it means do mo or both mm. mod but only occlusal caries you will find very rare in private practice so you have to learn this gingival management because mm. if you are not sealing what you call gingival seat mm. ideal way if your gingival seat is not caries free if your gingival seat if you are not putting your matrix till your gingival seat mm. and if you are not sealing that portion eventually actually you are making a gap mm. so bacteria can re enter so you are keeping you are keeping behind a potential source for reinfection mm. now your patient will keep on coming back mm. for un, one or the another reason for few reasons or after few years mm. he or she will come back to you and now he is complaining sir i am having a pain when while i chew mm. now you are taking an iopr and you are seeing a lesion now you will think i have followed vishal gandhi's protocol i have done a proper like i have done a proper obturation but dear the most important thing you have forgotten and that is the coronal seal mm. so when we see when we say coronal seal i always believe coronal seal has to be from orifice orifice of the canal to the gingival sheet portion mm. ideally it has to be coronal seal it means you are sealing the pulp chamber but in private practice when we say coronal seal think about you are actually sealing the tooth Hmm. from like orifice to the gingival seat right. area yeah. so it has to be a properly sealed hmm. and that can, if you are not doing that that can be the potential source for reinfection because hmm. just think about the primary infection scenario that has happened from, from that no? yeah that is happened from that way only where, from where bacteria comes from oral fluid oral saliva only hmm. so bacteria is there and you are not going to eliminate all, each and all bacteria it is not in your hand mm. right so when you are actually doing a good root canal aim for a good coronal seal mm. from orifice to the gingival seat mm. or maybe a good class 2 and x ray bite wing is mandatory for this mm. cause we do not understand the importance of x ray also cause you have to take x ray you have to check whether your restorative material your bulk fill or your paste composite has flown has gone to that depaced portion or not mm. if it is not then you have to redo this mm. is very sad thing so many times if you ask me vishal what is actually more time taking i'm not telling you difficult i'm using this word time taking because everything is easy i again saying this everything is very easy so what is more time taking composite restoration or endo always composite cause you have to put your blood in that actually mm. if you are not sealing a tooth properly eventually that tooth going to be failed mm. cause what people usually do they will just put a temporary chunk mm. once once they have finished the root canal in a single visit mm. now in second visit they will call the patient for the crown and the restoration now they are always in hurry i don't know why they are always in hurry but the thing is many times they will just put a temporary or maybe they will just put a gi or maybe they will just put a composite they will just adapt it and now they will do the crown preparation mm. so eventually that margin will not get sealed and you are putting a big 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 path or big way for bacteria to enter mm. if you are knowing or not but bacteria can survive on gp bacteria can make colonies in a simple language bacteria can make families on gp cause you all have seen this when you are doing a reroute canal mm. and you are removing a gp gp is of what color black mm. and orange remember this so what is black that black orange. sign that has colonies exactly that is the infection bacterial rather than bacterial products or bacteria mm. has like may has made biofilms on that mm. so you are actually seeing this every day mm. but you are not learning from some other clinicians mistake yes. and you are doing the same thing mm. so your post of a beautiful 100 likes 
or 500 likes on Instagram within like one hour, case got failed after six months. And that has become Dr. Vishal Gandhi's <laughs> pre-op. And at that time, you were so happy, I have done a good job. But you are, unfortunately, you have done a little not good job on restorative part. So make sure restorative seal, coronal seal, or maybe gingival seat, class 2 has to be very proper. Mm. So for that, periodontal or maybe the gum management. I am not saying be the periodontist. Mm. Straight away, suddenly, you know, overnight, you will become periodontist. No, that is not the thing. You will just think how you can get that deep margin, very sound tooth deep margin. Mm. Carries no. free. And now how will you elevate or how will you restore? Mm. Your job in endo and restorative is that only. Right? Many times, gingival polyp. Mm. We see gingival polyp case, but people has just put, just did a root can canal with the good irrigation protocol, even with the rubber dam sometimes. But they have not thought about to restore the tooth first. So always make sure pre-endodontic buildup or pre-endo buildup is mm. actually mandatory. Especially when you have a disto occlusal caries. Mm. It's very, when, in molars, I'm talking mm. about the molars. So when you have a disto occlusal caries, DO, if you ask me what is the first step to achieve somewhat like success, mm. it has to be pre-endodontic buildup. And it takes a few minutes. If you do not want to do a permanent pre-endo buildup straight away, you can just put a gingival dam. Listeners who are not knowing what is gingival dam, mm. the same material which you are using for your bleaching thing, to protect your gum so the same material you can put and you can make a temporary wall hmm. for a for an hour for that per, uh, for that sitting hmm. for that appointment okay so you can make that it's very easy you just have to put you have to light cure and you are done liquid dam. liquid dam. Uh -huh. so you just you will just put liquid dam, and now you will do so your hypo will stay hmm. rather than every time let's be very practical if you are not using even rubber dam your this pre endo buildup will make sure a hypochlorite is in the canal you are not getting constant flow from the gingiva mm. into your orifice or into your root canal space because bacteria is everywhere mm. so you are assuming i have used this material because this representative has come to me and it ha he has shown me this this good result or maybe this speaker has told me to use this but eventually you have to understand that first you have to stop the infectious thing coming out or coming in rather than coming into the root canal. You are getting me? And that is the bacteria. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. Many of time they left that infected dent in behind. So there is a bacteria anyways. So like uh, in my undergrad, my mentor told me that whatever happens, just remove caries first. Doesn't matter if you are saving a tooth first. Remove the cause first, this remove is, the caries first. This is indeed very true because the first rule of RCU excess cavity preparation is complete removal of caries. Hmm. Again, now, there is a very good, good, good thing you should understand. There is no infected dentine, there is no affected dentine for endodontic. Okay. There is no infected dentine, there is no affected dentine for endodontics. Mm. So you will just make sure your dentine has to be healthy yellow. You mm. all know what is like shade of the dentine, mm. right? Color of the dentine. So in my protocol, I will remove all caries. Mm. Okay. So sometimes people like tell me or maybe people ask me, sir, there will be no crown structure. It's okay. Mm. You can build that. But you cannot bond to the carious dentine. Mm. You understood? Because, sir, after a few days or maybe my crown has got chip off with the core itself. Mm. Why, why this happens? Because you have bonded your composite or any resin material. Your, you have put your GI on that carious portion. That is weak. And that is weak. So you need a healthy, when I am saying healthy, it has to be very sound. Mm. The same time, so you need a healthy and the sound structure mm. to rehab that tooth, to build that tooth, to save that tooth rather than. Mm. 
right? right. So you have to understand that there is no infected, there is no affected dentin. You know, time has gone like that was the very that was the thing for like past. I was about to ask that what are the outdated or what are the old thoughts and concepts that now first, have changed? First, if if we discuss about outdated and the like concept, you know, first thing I wish every clinician can change this. Stop using cotton for endodontics. Cotton is not for endodontics. Mm -hmm. After RCO, I will just put a cotton plug and over that temporary cement. Mm -hmm. After shaping, again, and there is no term called BMP as of now in endodontics. Biomechanical preparation has changed to shaping. Mm -hmm. So when you are shaping, when you have shaped the canals and you are obturating in the next time, you will just put the cotton and you over that you will put temporary. Mm -hmm. Okay. And even in those cases, just imagine now how important is pre endo buildup now? Because mm. if you have made a four wall, a box, mm. maybe your temporary will return to that place. Otherwise, it will went off and exactly it will so, be the same as otherwise it will go off in mm. like in coming hours or maybe the days and you will have a bacteria will have uh, swimming pool swimming pool it. rather than yes and they will dive into and they will make more and more more inflammation rather than mm. so the thing is you have to you have to stop cotton mm. the first outdated i i hate most the cotton so what you will use a teflon the mm. same way what what way you are using cotton mm. the same way you are using a teflon it can it can be as a like a barrier exactly. to anything that exactly teflon is actually hydrophobic right. now when i'm saying why when i'm saying no cotton the logic is actually cotton sucks everything it retains all cotton things. has fibers uh. and and on those fibers bacteria can make colonies mm. so many a times when you have a cotton you have not made a pre endo build up today patient has very less swelling mm -hmm. after few days or maybe after few hours, after your job, after your work, patient will come back to you. Sir, I'm having more pain and I'm having more like uh, this swelling part. Mm. This can be one of the potential reasons. There can be so many, but this can be one of the so many reasons. Mm. You are getting me? Because cotton has to be stopped. You have to stop cotton for endo. Mm. Same. Cotton roll isolation. Huh. Cotton main dominant or predominant work of cotton is to suck liquid, right? Mm. And to like gather every liquid in mouth around that tooth. Now you have put a good cotton roll and now you are assuming that you have made a good isolation. Mm. Dear, actually what you have done, you are actually gathering all that canal, Narmada canal water. <laughs> patients and other canal water into that particular spot mm. in which you are actually going to work mm. or you want to work also they forgot about the cotton so now it is like not a dry cotton it's a wet cotton huh. yeah, when you press it there is so much of fluid coming out of it so we are and and you are assuming that you have made a good isolation ah. when we say isolation it's very basic and most mandatory it's always has to be rubber dam isolation mm. nothing like more nothing less only rubber dam isolation and it's very easy rubber dam is always always and always about only mind block because mm. i regularly take rubber dam courses also so many times i have seen people have very good understanding skills even though they are very new in some of the courses i have seen an intern is placing rubber dam within a minute you can imagine if an intern can place, he has not seen the private practice scenario. Let's be very fair and very practical. In private practice, he or she will take five minutes. Mm. Cannot you spend five minutes? I assume you do not have 500 patients uh, in a day, right? Right. So can cannot you spend a five minute extra to 
even increase the success ratio of exactly audience. and actually that five minute eventually down the line after one hour after one hour 30 minutes will lessen your working time because your assistant will take more part with you mm. in your working process i'm i'm telling this openly though some dentists will not like but my assistant knows like more endodontics than 50 percent or 60 percent of the clinician mm. she has not any dental degree but I have learned, like I have taught her so many things and she can grab. Why? Because her dominant job is not to do suction. He can attach file. He can give me file. Even he can active, he or she can activate. Many a times she knows which file is this. If I am asking, give me this X file, mm. she will load on endomotor and she will give me. So I do not think if there is a there is there, there there is a case for instrument retrieval mm -hmm. she directly knows because after this instrument which instrument i am going to ask because mm -hmm. she knows the pattern cause she is with me from the point zero from first second to the last because mm -hmm. her job or his job is not to do suction okay. only it is to assist so us. exactly so rubber dam actually will eventually benefit to make sure or to help your like uh, workflow go easy go easy very easy Definitely. There, in routine practice because rubber dam is only mind block mm. if you think about in uh, economic mm. uh, aspect of the rubber dam it will take around 20 to 25 rupees per sheet rubber dam sheet mm. so if you are if you cannot spend 20 25 rupees i always say this charge your patient 25 rupees more don't think about to earn from rubber dam rubber dam is first for you mm. when i'm saying you it's for you dentist people then for patients because it will actually make sure your workflow is very smooth mm. you do not need to think about this tooth will get contaminated or my hypo will come out and my patient will have this or this mm. i mean ulcer or maybe if my file slips out of my hand, mm, it, it can go, it won't. Mm. So you are actually at very peace of mind. And that is the main thing. Also, yeah. we are isolating tooth. Like we are only seeing that tooth only. So we are not. Exactly, exactly. And that is the hidden benefit of rubber dam. No. Your vision will improve. Because you are actually seeing. I, I, I always say this. You are doing something into white, in the white. So why you are seeing red and why you are mm. seeing pink? Ask yourself. Mm. If you are seeing something, some work into white, uh. ideally you will only see white. Rubber dam will help you to see that white. Now white means your tooth portion. Mm. So if you are doing an anodic treatment, if you, are seeing, if you are doing any restorative work, you are doing something into white. Mm. So why you are seeing and why you are actually getting more less focus by actually diverting your mind in what's going on this tooth or maybe how patient's uh, tongue is moving rather than why you are not focusing on the single tooth or maybe the multiple when you are restoring but you are focusing on white only because you are doing something in white. So for that rubber dam is actually very, very, very easy and even if many many dentists know this that the founder of rubber dam in like before 160 years huh? 160 years before 160 years dr burnham has like put rubber dam into patient's mouth and after a few years he also understood this mm. the most difficult part for rubber dam is to convince dentists rather than patient so i always like get these questions in my workshops rubber dam workshop Sir, uh, how to convince patient? I ask them in return. Are you convinced? Because mm. if you are thinking rubber dam is an option that is not going to work for you. Mm. But you are thinking that rubber dam is the most basic thing. It's the same like sodium hypochloride in root canal mm. treatment or maybe bonding agent in your resin composite bonding or maybe composite restoration. Mm then things will get changed 
so it is not the hi fi or show off or insta or facebook dentistry mm. it's the most basic thing sir my patient is not paying me i am not charging much just i already told just charge 25 rupees more mm. cost a sheet will cost you 25 rupees yes the kit will come around 15 to 20000 but that is the single time investment so actually an investment of 15000 can elevate your practice from like a to z like from 0 to 100 why you are not investing or even why you are not thinking to go in that way hmm. rather than putting cotton roll around the tooth hmm. and assuming that you have actually isolate this area hmm. but what about the moisture what about the moisture into the oral cavity hmm. cause moisture can hamper the bonding agents actual properties hmm. so you have not thought in that way once you are thinking in that way then your less patient will come or maybe none patient will come with, with the post op sensitivity after composite hmm. or maybe less patients will come after the post operative pain or maybe the intra operative pain after your root canal treatment cause the hidden the most important thing is actually rubber dam mm. when you understand that it will open your third eye that i am doing a good job but actually i am not doing so good job reason you have to put rubber dam first mm. otherwise it's like i always say this don't put your hand into the gutter <laughs> cause there are so many like microorganisms mm. why you are taking chance why you are taking chance to get like like go into medical legal sometimes if your file if if your file went into the patient's thought mm. and we see this every 2 3 6 months there will be a case will pop out into whatsapp once morning you will see a file like a uh, file has gone into the patient's throat now gi scopy and blah 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 why you are like taking that chance though you have a 20 years of successful practice but there will be only one case though you have a 30 years of successful practice there will be only one case so why you are taking chance when you have very easy method to like prevent this and rubber dam is actually very easy you just need to be very dedicated and you have to be stubborn for few cases that i will not do my routine dentistry routine means endo and restorative without rubber dam because mm. if you are thinking in that way i will put in some of the cases or those patients who will pay me then you will not going to actually understand the importance of rubber dam because mm. you can prevent everything but you cannot prevent moisture that is in oral cavity though you are a captain america or iron man this is very 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 like mm. though you are a superhero at your practice in your field in in your like area you cannot prevent moisture if you can prevent then tell me also i will also start doing in your way there is no any such thing and rubber dam when i am telling rubber dam now we have so many like easy easy options also available mm-hmm. right start with those and put in your patient's mouth but do an ethical like dentist because mm-hmm. rubber dam is the like most basic thing i always say this it is as important as bonding agent is it is as important as sodium hypochlorite root canal irrigation no one think that i will do this composite without bonding agent mm-hmm. right no one will think. yeah no one will think even even many like 90% i assume that they are using sodium hypochlorite for root canal irrigation so for those 90% they will not think i will complete this case without sodium hypochlorite right mm-hmm. so how can you or maybe they can think without rubber dam mm-hmm. because rubber dam is just initially it will take when i started in like 2014 to put rubber dam in in my patients i took 45 minutes mm-hmm. to just put a rubber dam to just put a rubber dam so from 45 minutes to in this 10 years i usually take 30 seconds to 45 seconds i am blessed because i have my good assistant with me so she 
many times she prepare everything right. so this is actually the benefit of rubber dam that she is putting rubber dam because mm. i have taught her she has learned by seeing me because she has not the only job to do the suction or she has not only job to retract mm. she has actually an other good jobs or maybe other good things so she can put rubber dam she is taking x rays mm. she knows what is d finder she knows what is glide finder file she knows what is pro taper she knows what is high flex rdm she knows what is orodeca file mm. this is all about actually thanks to rubber dam because i can incorporate her with me each and every time i talk to her mm. i tell her this is how i do it's your job it's your job it's not my job each and every time mm. so eventually a clinician complete a case in 2 hours the same case i complete in 1 hour mm. because so, of good because assistance. exactly and the good assistant has so many things in her mind same at her end mm. not at my end she thinks how i can give a proper instrument at proper time mm. so she knows the timing she knows at what stage i am i am doing route right now rco access cavity preparation i am doing shaping with the 2004 she knows after 2004 i am going to ask to her 2504 so so at that time after 2004 most of the times i see she has already prepared 2504 in endomotor and i just need to raise my hand she will give me and this is how we work so actually you can take more more and more you can like more extract more from your assistant because mm. they are not only to retract they are not only to do the suction mm. rather than actually they are also like your partners while you work mm. and that is how we always call this four hand, four hand dentistry six has six hand dentistry and this is we call four hand dentistry mm. maybe you have seen right Right. how she every prepares everything yes. many times i don't see i just tell or maybe i ask or many times they understand now okay after irrigation i am going to put a micro suction in the canal mm. so they always ready with the micro suction in their hand i just need to lift my hand and they will put in my hand mm. so this is how we work and this is not any like things that we learn or we read in books unfortunately mm. so that you have to decide in which way you want to go so our first goal is always just put a rubber dam mm. once you have put a rubber dam now everything is like very clear mm. your tooth only tooth in which go, you are going to uh, do the root canal or maybe the composites it's out mm. so now you are very focused assistant also understand what process how you are going to do and she or he will prepare everything in a sequence right mm. the rubber dam actually has only benefits sir my patient has asthma or my patient is mouth breather mm. or my patient has this phobia i always always and always tell this this is not the excuses you should put mm. rubber dam is the mandatory thing if your patient is asthma your patient is mouth breather you can just make a hole besides or very far end from your like operated tooth or maybe the uh, uh, target tooth right or maybe the working tooth if your patient and yes with rubber dam bite block mm. bite block and rubber dam are the two most mandatory things if you want to improve your vision for endodontic treatment mm. without bite block ideally you should not do your endo procedure sir my patient has suddenly closed the mouth and my file got separated i always get annoyed in fact i need to say this i got angry many times dear what are you doing if you are not putting a bite block cause patient is not knowing what you are doing he or she always try to get relax or maybe try to close the mouth rather than just put a bite block comfortable to your access mm. your working access like in which area you want to access then just make sure patient will sit 
calmly 90% of my patients sleep during the process mm. so many times we always say this have a good sleep we will not going to wake you up in between the procedure even after the procedure if you are sleeping we will let you sleep only so don't worry this is your relaxing time just think like that you are in a garden for few minutes for a, like for some comprehensive patients apprehensive patients rather than those are reluctant in initial time initial few minutes that i am not going to like uh, i'm i'm not able to breathe with this or i am not feeling comfortable i always say this just for initial minutes you will see something is in front of your eye maybe you will see something is there in your mouth but this is for your protection this what is very important mm. this is for your protection and this is actually make your tooth more successful in a longer term mm. rather than doing because many times my practice is totally based on like retreatments so mm. this is very easy for me i always explain it at first time or before 5 years he or she has done this treatment primary root canal in your mouth has at that has he or she used at that time no sir i am seeing this for the first time patient will tell me this so my answer would be okay so i can give you guarantee with this sheet of rubber rubber dam sheet mm. your success will increase up to 50% straight away mm. so you just cooperate with me rather than thinking that what is this just imagine this is the part of the treatment and you should or dentist should understand that this is the basic part of the like how you use gutta parka or gp points into the canal mm. same way this rubber is a part of an endodontic treatment or maybe the restorative procedure mm. right so i always say this for initial few minutes you will see something is there in your mouth but if you feel sleepy have a good sleep relax totally and just think you are right now sitting or relaxing into the theater into your couch mm. onto your couch or maybe you are in a garden just and music music plays a very vital role just make sure he you play her or his likable songs and just go ahead because many times you will finish rub, in rubber dam in a very short time rather than spending 1 hour 30 minutes a molar you will finish in 1 hour 15 minutes 1 hour sometimes 45 to 1 minute 1 hour, 45 minutes to 1 hour so actually it is decrease your time mm. cause it's totally organized thing right cause you you are, you do not, do not think about that saliva will like go into the patient's like oh, i mean canal or maybe uh, this blood will go or maybe sodium hypochlorite what 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 will happen if sodium hypochlorite is coming out of the canal mm. so there are those all insecurities all fear will go away straight away also there is a one more benefit like i think patient will move less if we are using magnification or anything if you want to think about this mm. if you are thinking that in some point of your life or maybe your career you will start with microscope mm. you need to use like you used to with rubber dam yeah. in rubber dam in like under microscope you cannot do without rubber dam cause your one hand will totally occupied with the mirror and it's mm. always indirect vision rather than direct microscope is all about indirect vision mm. so you cannot retract or as your assistant cannot retract and you are seeing that that is not the thing and that is not the ideal also right. so under microscope you have to get used to first with the rubber dam mm. so isolation is actually you know sometimes i get this question even this question will into your mind also what is the importance of rubber dam dear it is not the thing for that which i am here to tell you importance advantages or disadvantages it is the most basic thing mm. so why not you are thinking in that way i will put rubber dam first and then i will think about or maybe i will see what else what next mm. but people like always go into that way rubber dam is most like rubber dam is most difficult 
or maybe I will put in some cases or maybe I will put for these cases or I will just do obturation under rubber dam but I will do shaping and RCO or maybe I will do RCO under rubber dam I will do shaping and obturation without rubber dam this is not the thing rubber dam has to be there from the zero second to the last second mm. or zero minute to the last minute it is the most basic thing and it actually requires just any for initial few cases just initial five ten cases for a month you will take around five ten minutes okay you can straight away put a single tooth isolation it's not a big deal mm. you just need to spend five ten minutes you need to have a kit a good kit ksk clamps are very good century nikton sheets rubber dam sheets are very good my suggestion would be use a proper good company rubber dam clamps and sheets mm. because those two things going to stay in patient's mouth for the next one hour mm. or maybe the one hour and 30 right so those two things clamp and the sheet you should use a good company or maybe the most branded one mm. don't use the pakistani kind of clamps that is that going to break in like one or two applications or maybe that going to lose once you have stretched it you it will not come to its original shape so when you are putting for the next case it will get loose or maybe it will stay loose mm. so many times it will break it will chip off it will fly off mm. during your procedure after your procedure when you are taking those clamps or taking that clamp out of the patient's mouth so that that will feel somewhere embarrassing for you some patients will judge that you are still a beginner mm. and i don't wish that that patient will judge you that you are a beginner for this your confidence has to be at good level mm -hmm. so make sure clamp has to be good sheets when you are using a not good sheets from any other company like then century and nikton what will happen sheet will tear mm -hmm. so you will think let me leave this this is like this is not my cup of tea or maybe this is not going to i was doing since 10 years and i have so many successful I am coming on to that also for successful practice. But the thing is, if you have used a good rubber dam sheet, that will help you for mm. initial days. Once you are used to, you can use any sheets. Mm. It's okay. But at least for few months, use a proper century or Nikton rubber dam sheets. And that will not tear easily. Mm. So once you have used this, once you are used to with rubber dam, you only will tell me one day, sir, I am not able to do now without rubber dam. And that is the thing I want or I wish that everyone has to like in your mind after a few cases. So you have to make this religion. And what is religion? We follow that religion each and every day. So make rubber dam your religion. And if you think in that way rubber dam is a religion, you will follow it each and every day. So it's not an optional thing for like your practice. It's a very basic thing. There are so many courses. There are so many YouTube videos. Invest in some like good educational stuff mm. so as i always say i am a learner you have to be a learner rubber dam is not the thing that you should like you cannot start at the age of 50 or maybe age of 25 mm. you can start and i have so many clinician i have so many course participants they have started rubber dam like i am right now 33 mm. they have started rubber dam after 25 years of their practice and they are doing excellent work since last two, three, one year. So I am so happy because and they are telling me, Vishal, we are really like amazed and we are ashamed of ourselves that what we were doing without rubber dam for those 25 years of our initial practice without rubber dam, I'm mm -hmm. saying only God, God knows because mm -hmm. I'm coming on to that part because many clinicians always say this. I am doing rubber dam since last 10 years and have so successful practice. Now, you know, dear, success is very subjective term in, in dentistry. Mm. When you are saying successful practice, just show me each and every patient's follow up for those 10 years. Mm. Do you have any even, not, a, not even 500 patients or you have even 200 patients? No, because mm. your patients is going to next door dentist. He is or her nearest dentist mm. and your post-op has become pre-op to someone. You are in your realistic or unrealistic other world that your practice is very successful. Mm. But we do not have follow-up dentistry. We, have, we do not have those practice yet developed in India 
that each and every patient comes for follow up even 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 i accept this my 60 70 80% patients come for follow up those 20 patients will fly or maybe gone they are okay but i have not seen what they are doing after 5 years mm. before 5 years my case was okay he or she was pain free with the my treatment but what is the current scenario what is the situation in his or her mouth at this moment i have not data mm. so when those people are saying i have 10 years of successful practice i always ask them sir i am totally agree with you success is very relative term and very subjective term success you call success cause your patient does not have any pain under anesthesia a good anesthesia mm. it's very 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 easy understanding that patient is not going to have any pain mm. if you have a proper anesthesia your success i believe the same patient comes to you after 5 years you are taking the x ray mm. and tooth is totally asymptomatic clinically like like no sign and symptom mm. of any infection or inflammation you are getting me so that is the success but people call success like i have done a good job 6 months 1 year patient is doing totally okay see the long term success mm. and see what what is coming to you because many times you will see a good looking root canal at that time before 5 years now there is a lesion mm. even doing a good coronal seal even doing a good apical seal still the case is failing so you have to understand that follow up is actually most important in that and in that that like whole scenario you know the most hidden like our strongest support is rubber dam because mm. if you have put a rubber dam you will not think about sodium hypochlorite like uh, amount volume of sodium hypochlorite you will use more amount of sodium hypochlorite for a tooth ideally 20 ml sodium hypochlorite is minimally required for any root canal treatment mm. when i am saying 20 ml you have to understand 10 syringes of 2 ml right. ask yourself every listener i am like asking you do you actually using in those syringes. those yeah those amount of and this is not me saying you can read this in betina basarani mm. he is the endodontic irrigation queen in the world and she has the book also betina basarani endodontic disinfection you can read in that this is not me saying by, from my head or maybe my protocol mm. my self invented protocol no this is the proven thing mm. for one canal at least it has to be 10 ml per canal and that has to be in dedicated irrigation phase after your shaping mm, final irrigation phase. yes so Any ask way. yourself It are you way. are you actually spending those much amount of time mm. those much amount of volume with the sodium hypochlorite also If, the activation exactly uh, half of the dentists are not using activation because they don't know the concept uh, i guess the activation sometimes they don't want to invest in that instrument of sonic or ultrasonic activators let's 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 if we talk about the most uh, like advanced thing in uh, endodontic world it has to be like irrigation because we have so many good devices right now mm. to activate sodium hypochlorite okay if you ask me vishal what is the most important step in root canal whole therapy or root canal treatment my answer is always always and always irrigation because which file you are using does not make any difference which bird you are using yes you have to be conservative ha huh. that will make not that much of difference like sodium hypochlorite but which irrigation liquid at what volume at what time you are using that will make a huge difference because mm. many clinician they will finish a job they will fin- finish the root canal treatment in a one hour mm. okay it's a good thing now they have sp- like spent so many things like for rotary instruments mm. for a good endomotor but they have not understood in fact the science of endodontics you know it's always what you remove from the root canal 
is more important than what you place inside it mm. and this is the golden sentence by dr herbert leader what you remove from the root canal is more important than what you place inside it mm. it's always the disinfection it's always the cleaning and that is the reason right now the term has changed change for cleaning and shaping so you know things will change when people used to take file or people used to take naocl before and then file mm. you know the dentistry the endodontics right now most of the people what they are doing they will do the rco access cavity preparation with their burr mm. we'll talk on that also that which burr and everything but they will take burr they will make a box cavity preparation they will do the proper rco now straight away they will take a 10k file 15k file no this is mm. the most 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 wrong way you should use sodium hypochlorite first it's always about the cleaning so that is called sodium hypochlorite bath now what is bath we all know you should make sure your tooth has some time before you use your 10k file that some time with the sodium hypochlorite mm. so i believe and i always say this things will totally change in your practice when you start using sodium hypochlorite first rather than right. 10k or maybe the rotary files because mm. it's all about cleaning so and when you use your edta gel it's the most 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 i don't know why people are still using edta gel has no role in endodontics it's specially with rotary mm. reciproc or any engine driven files if you wish to use with the hand files it's okay it's your choice i am not using edta gel for any case since last 7 years mm. so it's always sodium hypochlorite with your rotary file even with the hand files the most important thing when we are talking about the outdated concept mm. there is no role in io for iopr in your working length scenario so while you take working length you will not take pre op or you will not take iopr and confirm that like from the iopr you will confirm it's always about the apex locator mm. so apex locator reading is the most 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 accurate yeah you should know the protocol but you should understand that apex locator is the most mandatory machine for your root canal if you ask me to choose only one machine for root canal it always has to be apex locator and for that apex locator to get proper accurate reading for apex locator the first thing is isolation mm. so again you know the things circle, the yes. yeah yeah things goes in circle and your circle the nucleus is rubber dam ah. so you sir i am not getting a proper reading with my apex locator who i am using j monitor sir you have told me to buy 50000 40000 machine mm. it's totally okay dear what about the rubber dam mm. what about the cl class one cavity i mean from like box cavity have you made a pre endo build up or have you made a class 2 into class 1 mm. no your fluid is coming out your apex locator is eventually give you a false reading mm. a kind of short circuit kind of scenario that you are still in the coronal third but your apex locator will show you a red mark mm. or red lines you will think ah this machine is totally junk i am not going to use this and i will do the same thing which i was doing before with the working length with the x ray Hmm. cause x ray and working length totally different totally cause x ray is a two dimensional thing hmm. most this is the proven thing for root canal and root canal root and the canal anatomy most of the curvature in root canals are in buccolingual direction hmm. your rvg is showing two dimensional image so many a times your exit is on buccal or lingual or maybe the lateral side mm. you are short of the apex 1.52 mm mm. you are thinking i have to reach to the radiographic apex 
so you will push your file mm. your patient is in anesthesia a good anesthesia rather the patient will not feel anything mm. the same patient once anesthesia goes off after few hours he or she will call you sir i am having extreme pain mm. or i am having this slight swelling but i cannot touch the tooth i am not able to like if i am touching the tooth i am having a maximum like a very excruciating pain mm. you have gone beyond the actual apex so let's say it anatomical apex mm. and you are after radiographic apex so this is the biggest lie radiographic apex or radiographic radiographic working length determination is the biggest lie lie yes you can use that as an supportive measure mm. like if you have taken a working length with the apex locator still you want to double check now you can take the x ray but you should have this thing in mind whatever apex locator is saying this is going to be my final mm. your x ray will tell you if there is 2 mm short your mastagon has to be there only you should not breach that anatomical terminus while you shape your mm. root canal right the most important thing for apex locator is always isolation mm. cuz no one teach you this cuz no one like like give you importance for this mm. apex locator needs a good isolation rubber dam isolation and your second most important rule is your chamber has to be dry canal can be wet or moist mm. now when i am saying chamber has to be dry it means especially for multi rooted tooth so there has not to be any solution in your chamber mm. so that you have to clean and then you will insert your file and now you will take the working length and the most important thing we have been taught we have been pushed we have been pushed every day you should not breach apical foramen mm -hmm. dear for apex locator you have to go beyond the anatomical apex for once for once very correct you have to go in red zone first mm -hmm. then you will come back in green zone when i am saying red zone and green zone every other every company's apex locator have this two main zone mm -hmm. green and the red some apex locator will show you blood points some apex locator will show you red lines like j morita will show you red lines about that green lines about that blue lines right coltin apex locator will show you a blood dots or blood drops for beyond the apex scenario so you have to understand you have to when you are taking a working length you have to go beyond your apical foramen or apical terminus or anatomical apex mm. there is no minor constriction there is no major constriction in endo clinically those are the histological terms i will like urge you to forget those terms you cannot identify the minor constriction mm. you cannot identify the major constriction so another another misconcept what people are doing they will go to the 0 0 and now they will reduce 0.5 to 1 mm randomly mm. rather than reduce make sure for initial few cases when you are new user to rotary you can put your rubber stopper at 0.5 to 1 mm less with your rotaries mm. so eventually this is the study showing that even from first year to the 10 year 20 years of endodontic specialized practice people always tends to go 0.5 mm beyond the apex so for counter that i always say this for initial phase mm. for 1 to 2 3 years with your rotaries while you shape your canals rather than putting the same working length which you have got with the hand file just put 0.5 to 1 mm now again this 0.5 i don't believe in 0.5 cause this 0.5 is totally subjective term because your 0.5 is different this is very true you are just keeping that rubber stopper on your scale and now you are assuming that 0.5 i have reduced so what i believe i always make sure i have put a rubber stopper at 18 only mm. but i will not straight away reach to the apex mm. so in that manner i will not breach the apical terminus so 
rapex locator is most 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 important thing mm. so people always like say apex locator is very like mysterious uh, pro, uh, machine that it will not give me a proper reading or i am not getting the proper ideal result Vishal, you are getting each and every time a red zone. The red zone is a sign that you have got dependency. Mm. So, in 2023, there is a research, the recent research showing that patency is the ultimate goal for an endodontic therapy mm. or endodontic treatment. It means you have to reach a red zone. If you ask me, Vishal, what is the basic goal when you have hand file in your hand? my hand my goal first is to reach the red zone mm. not prepare till red zone again but to reach the red zone mm. what is showing i have opened the whole channel from top to the bottom and we are doing ectomy mm. we know ectomy means complete removal or complete cleaning mm. so your hypochlorite will reach to the last mm if you have got the patency and studies, articles says last 3 mm is the most crucial, mm. right? So this concept you have to change that you are taking or I will take this case working length with the X-ray. It's totally rubbish. X-ray is not for working length. At primary, never ever. Mm. Yes, it can be adjuvant, but the most important thing for working length is always apex locator. And the most important thing, you are show, you are seeing 15, 14, 13, 12, those kind of numbers on apex locator. Remember, friends, that is not the mm. They are just numbers. They are not. They do not represent distance. Exactly. They are not represent or they are not telling how far you are from the anatomical apex or maybe the apex. It's actually showing the numbers. Apex locators are frequency based apex locators. So they have just put a m numbers according to the gingival and the pulpal spaces, right? So once you are going down, many times it will blink 14, 13, 12, and many times what clinician other misconception, the biggest what I have seen, they have reached to the one level mm. or number one. Ideally, what we have just discussed, you have to reach the red zone. Mm. So now what they will do? They will not, they are trying, but they are not progressing further more apically. So they will just remove the file. Suppose right now the file is showing 17 mm. Mm. So they are thinking that I am 1 mm sure. far from the apex. So what they will do, they will put a rotary file and endomotor at 18 mm length. Dear, this is the most misconcept or maybe the most wrong thing you are doing. I cannot tell you that how many mm you are far from that you have to reach red zone. Mm -hmm. And for that, many cases you have to use other than K files. And that is the D finder or maybe the glide finder. You have heard about this C plus, mm -hmm. C pro, or maybe the C pilot files. So K file has actually very limited role. Because many times we see it's getting buckled or maybe banned. You have to use other files like heat treated hand files. And that is the D finder, glide finder, money company has it. So D finder, glide finder, even C plus, those, those all files have active tip. Mm. And that will go through that small passage. Sometimes a chunk of the tissues sometimes a dentin mud mm. or maybe some very narrow part i will not use this word calcification there is no calcification in fact in anodontics when you understand this you will always like many times i have seen people are saying my case sir i am not progressing from middle third because it is apically calcified here there is no thing such called as apically calcification in anodontics it has to be dentine mud, maybe due to the previous clinicians aggressively shaping or maybe incomplete shaping, then debris has packed to that portion or maybe due to the patient's age, canal has become narrow or there can be some anatomical variation. So this all scenario never represent any calcification. 
calcification has to be from top to bottom it always progress on top to bottom so if you are in middle third and right now you are term you are labeling your case is apically calcified is totally 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 not ideal word you are using actually you have to use other than k file pick d finder or maybe glide finder or maybe some other files c plus that will help you to get there though that red zone in apex locator it means pattern set and now you have opened your case this case has become the routine case mm. and now you can use your any dam rotary file you know sir i you will ask me i know sir what rotary file is best <laughs> or what rotary file you are using there i am using let's assume i am using all rotary files mm. but the thing is rotary always follow hand files unfortunately rotary file has no brain it works in a machine hmm. that you have set on 500 400 300 rpm 1.5 2.5 2 3 torque right right but on on which path it will rotate the path we created exactly the path we have created or maybe we have achieved or we have opened so that job or that work you have to do with the hand file mm. so you know ask me this sir which file is the hero file or in aeronautics number 10k file cuz rotary has a good job but always after your hand file mm. so your hand file skill to get pattern c is not the cup of every every person see this is very true because many times we get cases or we so we see cases cases are failing last 2 mm is untouched mm. and there is a huge lesion previous clinician has made a good job but up to what level till his or her rotary file went mm. but he or he or she has not tried to get the patency so you know the most important important thing in endodontics is always patency your red zone in apex locator otherwise otherwise you are not doing actual ectomy mm. so focus on your hand filing rather than x y z rotary files yes choose rotary file wisely which can which can like preserve your original anatomy original shape which is actually has no shape memory you can pre bond you can insert into the canal mm. choose those kind of rotary files but hand file you have to do the job first with the hand file then rotary can blindly go on that part so you know so my course participants or my students or my clinicians i teach them for half a day hand file mm. and within one hour they i teach them rotary cause rotary is very easy mm. i see people are learning rotary endodontics rotary endodontics dear you should understand hand file first what is the ideal motion for hand file mm. what is the motion for d finder how you can work with c plus file or how you can go with the smallest part in the canal apical part or how can you progress with the calcification hmm. portion people are blind totally after rotary. rotaries so rotary they think that rotary is a magic thing and that will create some magic eventually end up with dr vishal gandhi's cabin with the separate in separated instruments this is very reality because you have not made a path you have not went beyond the apex you have not reached to the apex your anatomical apex i am talking about and now you are straight away using rotary with a high speed mm. sometimes and it is very easy easy understanding like a carpenter can screw in anywhere mm. okay ask him to screw uh, that that same screw out mm. actually we are more more skilled because we have to take that file out from the canal also at the same time 
so you have to understand it should not bind anywhere and that is the role of your glide path with mm. your hand file because it has to be even smooth glide path on which your rotary file will go so your rotary file actually has only one job if you ask me it will just create a shape mm. from top to bottom a conical shape because you are using a tapered file either variable or the fixed mm. four taper six taper or maybe pro taper user will tell seven eight nine taper a pickle pattern then six taper okay so every file will make just a shape in the canal mm. why we are using rotary files this is the biggest concept you have to understand in anodontics rotary file is just to make sure more amount of sodium hypochlorite will reach to the apex it has nothing with the bacterial hmm. contamination in the canal remember this golden sentence metal never kills bacteria right and this is i hope now because uh, preserving dentin is most crucial to saving the tooth for the longer term so exactly so exactly exactly and this is the thing people have this misconcept that if i prepare canal more for an example if many clinician have have this concept in their mind i need to go 25 o6 or 30 o6 minimum for lesion cases or the cases which have periapical lesion the same case i get heal like i go i get healing in 6 months with only 20 o4 shapings mm. again i am telling it's always about the sodium hypochlorite and irrigation because mm. you when you are touching the rotary file you have to keep this in mind tooth integrity mm. when i am saying tooth integrity you have to understand how much dentin is left after your rotary file because the thing is you have made a good shape mm. but eventually you have removed a very sound a virgin sound healthy dentin straight away you have chopped everything mm. so you have to be in that balance you have to keep that equilibrium while you are using your rotary file because what happen many a times tooth actually get failed cause you have removed more amount of dentin you have make it hollow mm. a geriatric patient 60 years of patient mm. there is a lesion in mesiobuccal root let's assume a scenario there is a very minute canal or very narrow canal or let's say a calcified canal you are seeing on iopr but people have this concept each and every case i need to go till 2506 right dear you have to understand that, that there is very small amount of pulp you just need to make a space so your hypochlorite can reach to the apex mm. no book is suggesting or nowhere has written this that 2506 or 3006 is the minimum yes 2504 is good amount of like shaping you a uh, good amount of preparation but many clinician worldwide they are just using 1704 2004 and they get faster healing than us because they have a sound cleaning protocol yeah. or a proper irrigation protocol so again while only shape the canal irrigants will clean the canal or sodium hypochlorite will clean the canal because eventually there is no any rotary file in the world that can kill bacteria mm. metal never kills bacteria it will just create a space yes it will remove the more chunk more portion of the pulp and that's it mm. so you have to understand there are two parts in root canal one is for rotary or the hand files and second the most important thing is the second part and that is for sodium hypochlorite mm. cause until and unless you understand this you will always see the magic in rotary files i see magic in sodium hypochlorite mm. cause in 1 hour 30 minutes of my single visit root canal treatment 1 hour 15 minutes of my single visit root canal treatment 
my aim is to spend half of the time with the sodium hypochlorite mm. so my shaping protocol is always like that minimum amount of shaping minimum numbers of file rather than and a somewhere between like let's let me balance between tooth strength it means how much dentin i am removing plus if i am preparing 1704 2004 will give me more shape so my more sodium hypochlorite will reach mm. so my most of the shaping it's always 2504 sometimes 2503 mm. but i will try to spend more and more time with really? irrigation and activation because mm. show me a single tooth that is like get fractured with the 100 ml of sodium hypochlorite and versus show me a tooth which is fracture because previous clinician has done or have done a like very aggressive shaping you are getting me mm. so you have to understand that balance or you have to be in that equilibrium state that how much remaining dentin thickness is now after my shaping mm. so when you have a very narrow canal why you are bothered or why you are insist in, is in, in insisting after going 2504 3004 3006 i am not against those preparation mm. and people are there who is like who has successful practice but things have changed when you call it conservative in endodontics try to conserve the root dentine because mm. vertical root fracture will always programs progress from bottom to top from root tip to the top mm. so if you have made a good like ninja or micro access or good limited access and now you are actually preparing canal to 306 there is nothing like it's like just like it doesn't matter doesn't matter eventually you are actually weakening the tooth mm. so you have to understand that this or this and and the main important thing i don't know how many clinicians know this but the more amount of rotary file actually worsen the root canal inside situation how because mm. actually there is a golden sentence in root canal like in root canal our world like end world that actually rotary files don't clean canals it actually making canal dirty mm. but it will remove more dentin more it will, debris it will it will create more debris here mm. and people used to keep edta gel with the rotary files i think it just as a lubrication it doesn't have a role like a, it a does not have head. any role edta gel does not have any role why i'm saying this because you must have seen the flutes in the file mm -hmm. in between flutes you have seen some areas let's call it a land area or space area a mm -hmm. cheap area right mm -hmm. it ideally has to be like for your debris or for your chips dentin mm -hmm. chips but you have already lodged edta gel mm -hmm. Now what will happen? Your debris will go, will, will go apically, will push apically. Sir, after shaping, my patient has pain, extreme pain. My patient has have extreme pain. Cause you have pushed intracanal debris or intracanal dentine chips to outside. And diagnosis was symptomatic irreversible pulpitis with normal apical tissues. So there were there were no infection or inflammation at beginning mm. but you have produced you have pushed something now it is create inflammation it is creating inflammation mm. and your patient is having pain for few days sometimes a month and you always think uh, what is the mistake i am doing mm. so always an edta gel actually actually with edta gel file will work more like it will it will go in double shift mm. the same thing you will get with the sodium hypochlorite so we always say i always say you will keep sodium hypochlorite in the canal while you shape so you will just put a sodium hypochlorite drop in the chamber and now use your mm. rotary file and see the magic 
you will not go back to EDTA gel any more. I have not used in seven, eight years. EDTA gel is the worst thing. Sir, I have used a new file. Just now I have opened from the packet. While I was using for the first canal, it got break. Yes, there are so many reasons, but one reason I can give you straight away. Mm. EDTA gel you have used here. Yes, sir. This is your biggest mistake. So EDTA gel and rotary file. And this is not me saying, right? There is a, like a big research on this. Dr. Ove Peters is a big name. Even he has book on his name. Ove Peter, after 10, 15 years of study, he give this like proper data with EDTA gel, even with sodium hypochlorite. Mm. And you should, you should follow him, not follow me. You should follow Ove Peters because he is saying, when Ove Peters is saying, we should understand that this is the logic cause. Many like right, right now, many clinician are not using EDTA gel, but mm. though so many clinicians in India, unfortunately, are still using EDTA gel because they will just take on gloves or maybe file. They will just literally deep into the EDTA gel. Now they will like put. Mm. So this is not the right practice. On the last part of our this episode, uh, I want to know something about the canal and nerve because as you said that the tooth is the second most complex thing in our body. So there are chances I have heard that uh, the mesiobuccal 2 canal, MB2 canal is uh, widespreadly like a mist canal or something. So can you give a little bit more light to it? Exactly. Yeah. MB2. So if you ask me, so what is the prevalence or in how many cases, sir, you get MB2 or maybe in how many cases MB2 will be there? My answer is 100%. Upper six hundred percent, upper seven. Let's say be practical sixty to eighty percent. When I am saying hundred percent, then its issue is in your mind that you think MB two will pop out like MB one mm. or distal or palatal. No, dear, you have to search for it. The old old concept. What we have been taught in college, MB two will be on line joining from MB1 to palatal towards mesial side in mesial half, right? But the thing is the recent or the recent concept is MB2 you will find opposite to the distal orifice, distobuccal orifice. So forget about the old concept line joining from blah, blah, blah. Just search your MB2 in opposite to distobuccal orifice on mesial wall. Now, when I am saying wall, you have to trough it. And when I am saying trough into the pulp chamber, it's always ultrasonic. Remember, burr is only to make a box cavity. When you want, want to work on the floor, you want to trough, you have to use ultrasonic. So, ultrasonic is actually the most mandatory thing. Mm -hmm. It is the most conservative tool. Your aerotor, your burr will actually will be more aggressive. Ultrasonic will do the selective troughing at the right spot at your selected spot, right? So MB2, for MB2, I always prefer ultrasonic first. Make sure you will always use 21 mm file. Okay. There is a file called Blackjack. It is from the mini Kut company, Steve Bucknan company, company from Plan B Dental. They have made a special file for MB2. That is the 17 mm file. That is the 15 O5 taper. So as small instrument as you have, you can use that. So clinically, we have 21 mm of file, hand file. And never ever use hand file or never try to get hand file till the apex because we will it will not go so the next step once you get the catch next step would be pre flaring and that will be with orifice opener or reciproke so you have to understand there is a cervical dentine bump area your mb2 is going like this so you have to pre flare and now you will go straight 
you are getting me mm-hmm. so what you are you what difficulty you are facing at this moment or nowadays people find mb2 the next moment sir my file is not going to the apex and some superheroes one more step they will directly use rotary mm. now sir mb2 and broken file sir i have broke the file a new sx or maybe the new s1 or maybe the new 15 2004 straight away it's always you have to pre flare you have to make your way till the apical terminus you have to get the apical patency always with a d finder or maybe the glide finder kind of file which has a sharp or maybe the active tip because mm-hmm. it's very narrow canal so once you have reached the apical terminus you have once you have got the apical patency it has become the routine canal like others like mb1 distrobuckle so i always say to find mb2 is a different thing to get the patency is a different thing mm-hmm. to shape it it's a different thing and to feel and the clean and the feel is a different thing mm-hmm. so every steps needs some modification from the routine protocol mm-hmm. so first ultrasonic then use always 21 mm rotary and the hand both not the k file d finder or glide finder is good if you are shaping make sure 2004 or max 2504 is more than enough hmm. for mb2 always always and always make sure you will start your rotary file inside the canal for mb2 rather than starting outside the tooth now you are going there will be more chance of going out teeth get bent or maybe break so mm-hmm. always go inside once you have engage cause you have already made a glide path with the hand file mm-hmm. so that is more beneficial once you have engage into the canal your rotary file now you will on or activate your endomotor try to go in till whatever level it is going just make sure when you feel resistance you will come out mm-hmm. irrigate recap irrigate recap means recapitulation irrigate recapitulation with the 10k or maybe 10 d finder and now irrigate irrigate always with sodium hypochlorite with your rotary files mm-hmm. now use your same or the next rotary files at whatever stage you are like pre flare or maybe the initial shaping or the final shaping accordingly you can use and irrigation is most 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 important mm-hmm. you know many many a times you will feel sir as anatomy saying MB2 and MB1 are the joining canals. This is very true, but when there will be a case where there are two portal of exit or two separate exit, it means MB2 is a separate exit, has a separate exit, and MB2 a separate exit. It will sure shot become a failure case sooner or later. So I like get so many referrals for upper six reroute canal or retreatment. 95% cases has only one issue missed mb2 you know the most important thing or most sure shot failure will happen when you miss a canal and what is the canal actually in root canal when there is a section of more than 3 to 4 mm it is considered as a separate root canal system into the root canal so many times mb1 and mb2 are joining but but mb2 has 18 mm and mb uh, sorry mb1 has 18 mm to the apex mb2 is joining to 14 mm so last 4 mm is the common exit but what about those 14 mm which you have missed there is a pulp there, there is bacteria exactly there. there will be pulp there will be bacteria there will be potent source of reinfection if there is a small breach in your coronal seal mm. or you have missed a not like you have missed something in your irrigation mm. like you have not done a proper justification to your irrigation in primary root canal your tooth will victim mm. for the reinfection and your patient will keep on coming back sooner or later after few years he or she will come back with a lesion and now when those case refer to me i just do the simple process i always go with the cbct first 
because hmm. I need to see if there is an MB2 missing. Okay, 95% I'm 95 95% cases I am seeing MB2 is there. Previous clinician has missed. Hmm. So my job is actually very easy. I just need to first find the MB2, hmm. shape it, clean it, and fill it. Ha. Except in some of the cases like there can be another op another missed anatomy or maybe another op uh, issues also mm. but most of the time upper six mb2 failure mm. the most missed canal in oral cavity is always nisho buckle too because we have been taught upper six or upper molars has three canals no dear time has changed and you have to think that or you have to think in this way upper molars have four canals mm. upper molars that includes six, six and seven both it's very simple logical and the common sense thing that if your seven is same seven has same anatomy as upper six mm. chances of having mb2 will be very high so rather than limit your mind and your eyes to have like to go and think like in that, that way upper molars or upper seven does not have mb2 no mm -hmm. this will wrong because 60 to 80 percent cases upper seven will have mb2 mm -hmm. so upper molar has like four canals let's start the case with that philosophy only that okay. i am treating if i am treating an upper molar mm -hmm. or six or the seven two six two seven one six one seven I need to find first three canal, MB1, distobuccal, palatal, shape it first. Mm -hmm. Now try to find the fourth canal. Why I am telling you to find MB2 at last? Because you will have a better vision. You will have a clean chamber. You will have an, a good distobuccal shaped orifice. Mm -hmm. So exactly opposite to distobuccal orifice, you can find your mesiobuccal too. You will have a good dentinal map in fact once you have prepared your mb1 distobuccal and palatal mm. so this is how you can proceed with mb2 you know the most beautiful or the most positive thing to find mb2 think mb2 is always there mb2 is not an optional or additional canal it is the most basic primary canal for your upper six mm. For your upper seven, let's say be very practi uh, practical, 70 to 80, 60 to 80 percent cases. Mm. But you have to think in that way. If I am missing MB2, I have not finished the case, case yet. So at this moment, if I am not getting MB2, I always get curious or maybe little worried what will happen to this case in future. So many times. I have not gone for the CBCT priorly before or like pre-op level, mm. but intraoperative I go for CBCT if I am not finding MB2 canal mm. to get to see the actual scenario of mesiobuccal root. Mm. I have shaped MB1. Mm. So what is the status of MB2? Is it there or maybe there is a single huge MB1 or maybe mesiobuccal canal. Mm. So many times I go for intraoperative CBCT rather than pre-op CBCT if I am not finding MB2. Mm. So think in that way MB2 you have to find and that will not going to pop out easily like MB1, distobuccal and parietal. It will take, it will eat some of your time but that is the life. You have to put something to gain mm. something. Right. So this is how MB2 works in our like uh, endodontic scenario. But MB2 is always, always and always there. So my mantra is like before this, before hearing me, you always get happy to find, to get MB2. After hearing me at this moment, if you are not getting MB2, you will be more sad mm. rather than like happy mb2 is always there so mb2 if you are finding mb2 it's not a big deal or big shot you have done the thing is if you are not finding mb2 mm. then start worrying because what mistake you have done or is mb2 is there right mm. 
you know, so there is a prevalence rate or the it considered as the exception till now but the exception has a rate of 80 to 90 percent in there so i don't think it is an exception the exception is there is no mv2 exactly and 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 with magnification uh -huh. if you are working under loops if you are working with the microscope mv2 is always there mm. so you know you have to change your belief you know, we all are stuck with our mind blocks our belief some poured belief from others mm. it's not your mind product but someone has told you this some other your boyfriend girlfriend has told you this your husband wife has told you this 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 truth will have this why you are not starting the case with the reverse belief mm. that actually will like lead you to the very good practice for an example why my upper molar has only three canals and why not four canals mm. so let me start the case this tooth has four canals mm. if my patient is under 40 years or maybe under 50 years why lower molar has only four canals this tooth will have mid mesial also so mid mesial also lower six many a times usually under 40 under 50 years of patient medial mesial canal prevalence or chances of having mid mesial canal a canal between mesiobuccal and mesiolingual will be very high so almost 50 60 percentage of cases you will get mid mesial mm -hmm. i have few cases mid mesial is separate mesiobuccal is separate mesiolingual is separate and mid mesial is separate now if you are not thinking that first at first end mm. you are not going to find it if you are not found it you are not going to clean it you are not going to shape it you are not going to pack it sure short sure, failure down the line five years ten years and now you will you are assuming i have done a prop i have done the job with the proper protocol i have put even rubber dam also mm. but why my case is failing you need to think about additional anatomy or maybe the anatomy now when you are doing a ectomy mm. there is no scope to left behind anything anything means anything mm. if you have spent 15 20 half an hour quality minute to find mb2 and mean visual and though you are not finding i will tell you it's okay after in some of the like cases you will not able to find but it's okay but you have to spend time you have to try but unfortunately mb1 distobuccal palatal job done master con job done mm. dear after master con there is a big job still you have to do and that is called irrigation after four canal mesiobuccal mesiolingual distobuccal distolingual for lower six you need to shape the isthmus between mesiobuccal and mesiolingual mm. and that isthmus shaping means coronal isthmus shaping the line the dentin overhang between two orifices you need to have flatten out with the ultrasonic same for premolars buccal lingual you have to make sure in between portion of buccal and the palatal or the lingual canal you will straighten it out with the ultrasonic same way lower anteriors if you have found two canals you have to straighten out the coronal isthmus that is we called isthmus shaping a precisely coronal isthmus shaping that has always has to be with the ultrasonic mm -hmm. sir i don't have ultrasonic tips dear you can use the perio scaling tip just modify it with the burst mm -hmm. just take the old one perio tips that is overused or there is the like waste Take those tips, just make sure with the arrowter and the burr, you will just make it a point one, like arrow shape or the point one. Now, just at the speed of 0, 1, 2 at the ultrasonic, just trough the portion mm. between the mesiobuccal, mesiolingual, or any case scenario where you will find two canals in a single root. Mm. So, lower six meso or any mesiobuccal root in oral cavity lower 6 lower 7 upper 6 upper 7 all mesiobuccal root in oral cavity have most of the time two canals even 60 to 80 percent upper 7 mm. right where where you will find mb2 mm. lower anteriors single root two canals premolar single root two canals when you see almost all tooth they have two canals. exactly also i have a doubt in like 
if we have a like two one or the one two one like that type type of configuration how will we go in between those areas so i guess we can do with ultrasonic ultrasonic activation you can go yeah your sodium hypochlorite can reach right mm. so let's imagine a scenario when where you have two one type of canal anatomy right so two one is actually comparatively very easy mm. always remember if you have more orifice than the exit it's easy for you mm. but you have less orifice and more exit for an example one orifice and two exit mm. it is going to be difficult for you so many times clinician will not be able to find or scout those two exits mm. so what is the best way to counter this make sure you have prepared you have shaped you have cleaned a single exit that you have already found mm. now totally rely totally be dependent on irrigation more and more irrigation mm. right what you clean from the root canal is more important than what you place inside it so your job is to clean canal first mm. unfortunately clinician is still not giving importance to this many a times you will not able to find exits or maybe apical patency or maybe delta part mm. so in those all scenarios you have totally you will be dependent on your irrigation mm. that is the beauty of root canal actually root canal treatment because your sodium hypochlorite with a sound proper sonic or ultrasonic activation mm. can can reach to all those areas on which your rotary file or mm. maybe your hand file have not touch or reach mm. you are getting me yes sir. this is the beauty of actual irrigation mm. that is the concept of irrigation try to hit maximum areas with the sodium hypochlorite mm. rather than all only focus on rotaries or maybe the instruments nickel titanium or the stainless steel mm. at least view more importance to sodium hypochlorite so if there is a one two anatomy as i told you rely more or focus more on irrigation if there is one two one anatomy it's okay if you are same many of the times what what you will like in which case scenario which tooth you will get this lower anteriors mm. you will get a single oval orifice now below that orifice one to two mm down apically you will find buccal and lingual two canals separately from like near to apical area it will merge and it will exit from a single uh or if uh foramen right so for those case scenario it's okay because there is only one exit but imagine that one two mm, there's two exit there will be a pulp yes. from two chambers yeah like. so your job always is because i have i have got all the canal anatomies one two two one two two one two is another big headache because mm. uh, i an ideal two one two will test your patients because you cannot put two gps at the same time so there are so many techniques but you have to relay more or irrigation because after doing after having like practice or having even masterize many times you will see the other half two one two so it's the second exit which is totally filled with the sealer or sometimes it is not filled let's be very practical so on those scenario if your irrigation is sound actual your irrigation will save you mm. cause maybe rotary will go rotary will go. rotary will go but what about the filling your those minute 1 2 3 mm space mm. will not get filled with the gutta paka mm. so at, at that time if you have irrigated well and when i'm saying irrigation irrigation is always comes with the combo activation mm. so irrigation if you have irrigated well you can give like trust to your patient or even you can have a peace mm. in your mind that this tooth will stay because i have cases where i have just cleaned the lateral canal cause was what insta dentistry what facebook dentistry what social media dentistry shows our clinician has filled a lateral canal with the sealer and case got healed Mm. i have so many cases where my sealer has not went into the lateral canal but my lesion has healed mm. what does it indicates what you remove from the root canal is more mm. important than what you place inside it mm. our first job our first goal our first aim 
to clean the three dimensional root canal space mm. and okay. that is that is how we have developed our 3d cleaning protocol many of you have seen that i am using like i am heating sodium hypochlorite in the canal then i am activating it mm. so that is the beauty of sodium hypochlorite you can play with sodium hypochlorite and that will give you more power your sodium hypochlorite will become more powerful with activation it will go to interim spaces where mm. your rotary or hand file is not going mm. just think about the isthmus or the horizontal canal between uh, two mesial canals uh. or lateral canals let's be very practical in 60 80% lower molar mesial roots or upper molar mesial root there will be an isthma mm. now this isthmus is actually space to be cleaned with sodium hypochlorite mm. so as i told earlier there are two spaces or two parts in root canal system one is for rotary and hand file mm. and the second is irrigation irrigation so we you have to understand you have to focus on both mm. unfortunately rotary file will make a way though it will make debris it will make smear layer still we have to use it mm. it will open a main path so accessory or the lateral path which is associated with the main path you can get enter with the sodium hypochlorite mm. so ironical thing is though sometimes i give like i abuse or i blame to the rotary files but that is the important thing it will create a space again mm. only create a space very good the rest job of sodium hypochlorite mm. in that space by that space rather you will get into the isthmus you will get into the lateral exit mm. you will get you will go into the splits because there is a open path a clean path so focus first if you ask me what is the fundamental goals or of like practical way mm. or maybe the mechanical things in root canal first is patency mm. after patency you are a good shape of the canal and once you have shape of the canal it's always irrigation mm. everything comes later on but this three the first always is patency because mm. if you have not opened the canal properly mm. actually you are not doing ectomy you are doing somewhere otomy mm. pulpotomy so you are on in that, there are few cases also where you will not get patency but for those cases i prefer to irrigate more and more mm. cause my endo is totally based on irrigation and not my endo the ideal endo is totally based on irrigation rotary rotary hand file everything has some some part of role to play but the major role to play is always sodium hypochlorite mm. the most easiest most cheapest solution in our root canal therapy the most important and that is the most important thing there is a lesion there is a big lesion underneath the root dear you have to understand the lesion is a by product of bacterial toxins mm. you have to kill the main source of infection then body will heal exactly body will heal cause don't think about what is outside the apex cause our play our playground or our play area is canal mm. right so why i always say this why you are worrying for what is beyond the apex cause eventually though you are xyz endodontist or though though you are xyz good clinician you are going to treat only canal and when there is a straight canal a simple 25 30 oh 4 just make a shape do a proper irrigation if you get a dry canal just fill the canal space obturate it i mean see after 6 months mm. it's actually very easy but you always see doubt yourself by seeing periapical condition will this case will this case go for surgery no i think i should call this oral surgeon no i should call this endodontist dear it is the easiest thing mm. cause when you understand microbiology of endo when you understand the biological concept of endodontic therapy or a root canal therapy 
it's the most easiest case because mm. ultimately you are going to treat root canal so just treat it mm. why you are worrying what is outside the apex because i know so many young clinician even the senior most clinician they always get confused or doubt themselves if this case what if this case does not heal dear mm. have you irrigated properly have you done justice to the case just spend 1 hour 30 minutes and see the magic because mm. the main source the lesion is created by bacteria and the beauty is bacteria are in the canal if i ask you let me ask you one thing in your podcast if if there are 100 bacteria right mm. so how many bacteria will be in the canal and outside the canal let's say 99 versus 1 mm. 99 99 will be inside the canal in the canal space or 99 will be the outside the canal space if the source is the canal then most of the bacteria will be there exactly so bacteria is not outside the apex there is bacteria because... exactly bacteria see every every living or every creation by god mm. which has a vitality in it amoeba to dinosaur mm. they all excrete something from their body mm. so bacteria eat pulp they excrete toxins now what is the easiest path to come out from the root canal space apical apex so always it get out mm. from the apex body will sense there is some danger mm. so histocytes and mast cell will come into action mm. wbcs and they will fight against those toxins mm. inflammation will be there now in by the by product of this inflammation that bone will get destroyed or resolved that you are seeing in two dimensional x ray and you call it a lesion mm. so actually bacteria is inside the canals they are eating pulp they are releasing something from their body and that is actually the inflammatory thing mm. so when you are actually destroying bacteria itself you are doing the most beautiful thing by doing a root canal treatment so lesion is a by product actually you are killing the main 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 you are killing the thanos mm. <laughs> rather than you are killing their subsidiary like their uh, soldiers you are actually killing the thanos so why you are worrying let's be the avenger mm -hmm. we all are superhero we just need to do a proper root canal and a simple root canal honestly saying does not require any hi fi instruments mm -hmm. does not require any hi fi methods it's only some upgradation mm -hmm. some modification from your routine protocol mm -hmm. and that you can do from the next moment only you do not need to invent in invest in 50000 or 1 lakh rupees machine the same thing you can get it 10000 20000 or maybe 5000 machine mm. or sometimes without machine we have another technique we have so many different techniques also but you need to understand mm. when there is a lesion there will be so many bacterial biofilms now biofilm has a, a protective layer on that biofilm means bacterial colonization mm. bacteria lives in a colony they don't live in a like single life they don't they don't stay forever single they always live in families this biofilm have as a protective layer mm. until you give more hypochlorite amount of more hypochlorite until you activate it will not get destroyed mm. so this is the basic and logic behind using sodium hypochlorite there is no substitute for sodium hypochlorite mm -hmm. the basic requirement for root canal therapy is actually two or let's say three mm -hmm. first is to kill bacteria to remove pulp tissue now tell me a solution which has both this capacity so except much. sodium hypochlorite no there is none this is the reason in lesion case even in open apex case even in resorption case mm -hmm. even in symptomatic irreversible pulpitis case apical pedonitis case or necros case you have to use sodium hypochlorite mm. you can change according to the case scenario application of sodium hypochlorite 
so from positive to negative pressure irrigation or maybe some of the cases you will need some specific device because those cases are very few mm. if you ask me vishal in what type of cases you are not using sodium hypochlorite my answer is for prosthetic cases or for denture cases just mm. jokes apart i can use or i have to use sodium hypochlorite for all endodontic therapy mm. even with the vital pulpotomy even with the open apex even with the apical periodontitis or even with the irreversible pulpitis mm. so there is no substitute so don't try to find try to search for that substitute of that product which is actually proven from last 80 100 years because mm. there is not going to be any in future even that this solution will replace sodium hypochlorite sir sodium hypochlorite has so many toxicity dear i have used 80 100 ml of sodium hypochlorite you just need to use with a side vent needle mm. at the proper length working length minus 1 2 or 3 safest bet and with the not any like more pressure just a little pressure drop by drop sodium hypochlorite is the ideal and now activate it Mm. So this is how you can like we'll discuss more into irrigation for next sure. episode also. But we can like this is how we can do, right? Definitely. Okay, sir. Okay, so there is amazing conversation, and I will like it's a eye opener and learn so much things. And obviously, our viewers have learned so much things. So I'm really looking forward to the next session where we will be discussing more about the irrigation, the activation, and the pile breakage reroute re canal how we done it and what we can do to learn more about microscope from you sure 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 okay My thank pleasure. you thank you yes. so much sir for giving me this much time to like bring knowledge to vast community of our dentistry yeah. thank you pleasure, so much pleasure. for your work and thank you for inspiring me to save more tooth to how to save tooth because i don't know that how to find the mb2 unless you have told that first do all three shaping and then you can find the mb2 if i'm going to try mb2 right on i want to be able to and i think that mb2 will be not there so it is really i i hope not for me so thank you so it's much nice, and we will meet you soon yeah thank, thank you sir thank you this episode is such an eye opener for me and i guess for you as well So this is the first episode of our second season of Unidenture Dental Podcast, and we have talked a lot about root canal treatments. And we thank Dr. Vishal Gandhi for this time and knowledge. And we will bring Dr. Vishal Gandhi again to discuss re-root canal treatments, magnification, and lots of clinical cases. Also, if you have doubts or if you have any questions that you want us to cover in our upcoming episode, then comment down below your questions, and we will cover it for you. Also, if you want to join his courses about the root canal treatments and microendodontics, we have mentioned his details in the description, so you can check it out. If you find this podcast helpful, then subscribe to our channel. Also, share it with your friends, and we will meet you on the next episode.